Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of General Ultrasound, we're exploring the sonographer worksheet. Do's and don'ts. The most important part of a sonographer worksheet and for an ultrasound exam is the question, why is the patient here? And there's multiple reasons for an exam. Note that ruling out a pathology without a valid reason for ruling out that pathology is not a sufficient reason for exam. So why do patients come for an ultrasound? Number one is the patient has symptoms. And the symptoms are going to be specific for each type of ultrasound exam. And these are symptoms such as pain, nausea, vomiting, etc. And it's crucial for the sonographer to not only specify which symptoms the patient is having, but also the duration of the symptoms. Has the patient been having the symptoms for a day? Have they been having the symptoms for weeks or months or longer? And also, are the symptoms intermittent or are they constant? Another reason for an ultrasound exam is abnormal labs. A common one that we see in the general lab is abnormal LFTs. These are liver function tests. But you may have other types of labs that are relevant that will prompt an ultrasound exam. The third reason for an ultrasound exam is to follow up another study. The patient may have had a different type of study, such as a CT or an MRI, that demonstrated some sort of pathology. An ultrasound is often used to help characterize and evaluate this pathology. Or the opposite may be true. The patient may have had a negative or normal CT, MRI, or another study, and ultrasound is used to try and find an answer for the reason for exam. So let's say a patient is having symptoms, and they're in the emergency room, and they had a normal CT exam, and the doctor is still trying to figure out what led to the patient's symptoms. So an ultrasound may be ordered to evaluate patient symptoms or abnormal labs when other imaging modalities are normal. Another reason for an ultrasound exam is to follow up a previous study. The patient may have had a previous ultrasound exam that demonstrated some sort of pathology and that pathology needs to be followed up with serial ultrasound exams. An example of this would be a thyroid mass that is being watched. And the ultrasound is used to evaluate whether or not the mass is changing in appearance or growing in size. Additionally, an ultrasound may be ordered to screen for disease. An ultrasound can be used as a screening tool in the absence of patient symptoms or abnormal patient labs to screen or look for the presence of disease. And screening ultrasound tends to be a controversial topic. And different physicians, hospitals, and clinics are going to have different protocols regarding screening ultrasounds. However, some of the reasons we may use screening ultrasound are if a patient has a previous history of complications. So one context that I can think of an example for this is a screening high-risk OB exam may be performed in a patient that had a previous pregnancy with complications, such as a miscarriage or chromosomal abnormalities. Or a patient may also have a screening ultrasound if they have a strong family history of disease. Or for a patient that is at high risk themselves of developing a certain disease. An example of this would be screening for an abdominal aortic aneurysm or peripheral arterial leg ultrasound in patients that are smokers. Or performing a screening breast ultrasound in a patient that has a strong family history of breast cancer that may be unable to undergo a mammogram exam. When filling out a sonographer worksheet, it's crucial to be succinct. This is not an essay. It's really crucial to be short, sweet, and to the point. And you want to focus on what's abnormal. You don't want to describe normal findings in details. It's preferable to either circle or mark the check boxes in that indicate normal on a sonographer worksheet. And then also fill in your measurements and any abnormal findings. Most importantly, limit your descriptions to abnormal areas visualized on an ultrasound. And it's also important to describe rather than diagnose. 
and this is characterizing any abnormal findings that you visualize. As a standard rule, you don't want to diagnose. However, if you need to provide some sort of diagnosis, then always include a question mark. That question mark can save you in a legal situation. For instance, let's say you visualize a complex mass next to an ovary in a patient with a positive pregnancy test and an empty uterus. Most likely, this is going to be an ectopic pregnancy. But since nothing in ultrasound is 100%, and the job of a sonographer is to describe rather than characterize, on your sonographer worksheet, indicate to the radiologist what you're visualizing as a question. For instance, you could say, complex mass adjacent to left ovary with peripheral vascularity. Question, ectopic pregnancy. While all the ultrasound findings indicate that this is most likely an ectopic pregnancy, that question mark may save you if this ever were to become a legal situation in court. On the sonographer worksheet, you also want to ensure that you have completed all your measurements. You want to measure all normal anatomy in three dimensions. This is length, height, and width. The exception to this is the aorta, in which the length is only measured in the aorta if an aneurysm is visualized. And you want to measure all pathology that's visualized in three dimensions. And you want to ensure that you include both normal and abnormal measurements on your sonographer worksheet. And you also want to carefully think about the big picture. Why is your patient there? Do the ultrasound findings correlate with any of the lab values, patient symptoms, and or reason for exam? And another important thing to keep in mind is if you can't see it, you can't see it. Obscured, limited visualization, not visualized, area of, etc. There's lots of reasons why we can't visualize a structure on ultrasound. So try your best, and if you can't visualize it, ensure that you're communicating that to the radiologist on the sonographer worksheet. And some reasons why you may not visualize a structure are overlying bowel gas, large body habitus, you may have your image too zoomed up and are cutting out sections of that structure, or the patient may have eaten or is not properly prepped for the ultrasound exam. Now let's talk about some of the elements of a poor sonographer worksheet. Number one, being too focused on normal instead of abnormal. And this means writing out all of the normal findings in addition to or instead of checking the boxes. And the danger of this is there becomes so much wording about normal findings that either one, you forget to write the abnormal findings, or number two, the abnormal findings are lost within all that normal text. Another element of a poor sonographer worksheet is it being too wordy. You don't want to use complete sentences. You want to use sonographer shorthand. This is not English class, and we need to be short, sweet, and succinct. So an example of this, a poor way to fill out a worksheet would be to say, a patient is experiencing pain that comes and goes after he eats for about six weeks, and he's been having nausea and vomiting also. The correct way to write this in sonographer shorthand is write upper quadrant pain intermittent times six weeks after eating nausea vomiting. You can see that the second example is concise, is not too wordy, and gets the point across in the minimum amount of words. Another element of a poor sonographer worksheet is important pieces of information are missing. If you forget to write relevant patient information, labs, prior exams, or if you fail to describe any abnormal findings or why you failed to visualize any normal structures. Another mistake is including irrelevant information. You don't want to include information about past exams or labs unless they're directly relevant to the exam. For example, if your patient is there for an abdominal ultrasound, it's not necessary to talk about x-rays of the foot. 
And this also applies to family history. You don't want to include any family history unless it's directly relevant to the exam, especially family history about distant relatives. So if a patient's there for a, an abdominal ultrasound, you don't want to say something like, the patient's worried because the patient's father had a heart ultrasound a week ago because that wouldn't have anything to do with the reason why the patient is there for the abdominal ultrasound today. Another element of a poor sonographer worksheet are missing measurements or volumes. You wanna carefully proofread your sheet before turning it in to ensure that there's no missing information. And you also wanna ensure that any vital information from one section on the sheet is carried down to any overall exam finding section. And then one of the biggest mistakes that you can make on a sonographer worksheet is not providing a valid reason for exam. And this is a legal liability. A facility is not going to be reimbursed for an exam unless there's a valid reason for that exam. And be really careful about relying on digital notes typed into the ordering system. While sometimes these are placed in there by physicians, they also can be placed in there by schedulers that are not familiar with the ins and outs of the ultrasound modality and may not be typing in a valid reason for the exam. And it's crucial to know that R slash O, this is rule out, is not a valid reason for an exam. Rule out can be placed in conjunction with patient symptoms or some reason why they want to rule out a certain pathology, but by itself as a standalone reason, it's not a valid medical reason for an ultrasound. And then lastly, another element of a poor sonographer worksheet is not commenting on areas that were not visualized. If you did not visualize an area during the exam, you must list this on the sonographer worksheet, along with the reason that region was not visualized, such as gas, body habitus, etc. If you don't comment on not visualizing an area, the radiologist is going to assume that you thoroughly evaluated each segment of that region of the body. 